Well, welcome back to the Art of Boat Building. Now that I've got the Victoria project all wrapped up, I can now get started back on the Haven. Now there's quite a bit more to do on this boat. I'm in the process actually right now of finishing up some of the castings for the rigging. So in addition to the rigging, uh, I'm going to make my own sheaves, which will be quite a long project in and of itself. So in addition to that, I'll be sewing the sails and of course doing all of the rigging. There's quite a few little housekeeping things I need to do yet also, like attaching the seats and doing some hatchways and some small finish work like that. So before we go headlong and to finish up the Haven, uh, there's a small project that I'd like to get completed. Several years ago, I purchased this vintage runabout. It was a barn find that I had been in a barn for over 17 years. I was searching for a trailer, and it turns out I bought this $800 trailer and it had a boat on it. She's a 1960 Sea Ray and turns out to be a significant boat in the pleasure craft industry. Cornelius Connie Ray III founded Sea Ray Boats in 1959. He was one of the early builders of fiberglass boats. Sea Ray started manufacturing 16-foot family runabouts like this Sea Ray 700. Over the years, I got her cleaned up and running. Last year, I repainted her and reupholstered the seats and gave her new carpeting. So one of the main issues with this little boat is this old motor, which is a 1961 Johnson. Now initially what is happening is it just did not get enough fuel. So I completely rebuilt the fuel pump, but it still just never got enough fuel. And that while you were even just in cruising mode, it just never got quite enough fuel. So what happened was someone had to sit in the back and squeeze the primer pump to keep fuel going to the motor. While I was out at the wooden boat show, I was able to ask quite a few people that knew a lot more about outboard motors about why I was having that fuel problem. And basically the answer is that this fuel pump, which was kind of a rubber diaphragm, that the cam in the motor was probably worn down round and not egg shaped like a cam should be. So therefore it wasn't moving enough. While at the wooden boat show, I met Alec Uknot of Portnatic Marine while fitting Victoria with an electric outboard. It occurred to me that this could be a good solution for my outboard. So what I'm gonna to do today is abandon a gasoline outboard motor and replace it with an electric motor. So with Alex's help, we came up with a plan on how to electrify this little boat. Now what was important to me was that I'd be able to keep this case for this outboard so that it would retain its vintage look. So now the first thing that's most important was the location of the prop. So this dimension here is very critical. You can see from the center of the prop to where the case splits at this point is pretty much exactly 10 inches. So let's keep that in mind and I'm going to show you all the components of how it's going to go together. So what I've done here is I've laid out all of the components that we need in order to electrify the boat. So I've laid them out here in sort of the order that they need to be assembled. So let's go start down here at the propeller. So you can see here at the prop, if I go to the center, then the top of this flange is exactly 10 inches. So that's going to work out just perfect when we put the motor in there. So there'll be a little bit of uh, machining and some calculating to figure out how to attach this plate to the uh, case of the other motor. Now the electric motor is actually inside of this little pod. So that's where the power is. So what comes out of that then is the electric cable. So the wires that come up out of the pod then do two things. One, it goes to the power, which to the battery, and that's what this little junction box does. And it also then has an on off switch to turn the power on and off for the motor. Also what comes out of the cable is a control cable and this cable controls the speed of the motor and also the direction. 
All of this is pretty well laid out in the book on how to put it together that comes with the pod. The control cable then will travel forward to the cockpit where we then have a throttle control here that will change the speed to forward or reverse. And from that, we go into a little panel here that has a readout. This will be mounted then into the dashboard, which will tell us how much power is left and where the efficiency of the battery as we're moving along. On the back of that, then we connect this cable to the throttle and the throttle to that control panel. All of that is also covered very nicely in the booklet that comes along with it on how to install it. So once the information then travels back to the control center, then what we have is this cable here, which carries the two power cords and the information cord. So this then simply plugs in to the battery, like so, and then we're ready to go. So once the battery needs to be recharged, it's very easy to disconnect the control cable and then the battery simply will lift right up out of that case so you can take it then to a household current uh, where this charger then, which changes 110 AC into DC and that simply plugs in right here, like that. So this will sit inside of the case where the actual electric or where the actual outboard motor sits right now. So the first order of business is to take that case apart and start disassembling that old outboard. Alright, so now that I've got this piece off, I can go in and measure, and this is where the new pod will attach to it. Well, it's day two. Now, yesterday it took me about four and a half hours to disassemble that old outboard. Now, before I quit for the day, I measured this piece, uh, this mid piece here, to see what size of an aluminum plate I would need because I'm going to take a plate and put it here and then mount that to the, uh, this midsection. So I ordered a piece from McMaster Car, and while I was waiting for that this morning, I then power washed the entire case and got it all degreased. So it's a little afternoon now, and my piece of metal has been 
delivered. And what I got here was a piece that is five inches by a foot and it's three eighths of an inch thick. So what I will do is to fit this on top of the, the pod here and then the case will go on top of there that I can then bolt it to the bottom and then this part will bolt onto the existing case. So the first thing that I need to do is to determine how this will fit through this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, control power cord here and feed it through and see how well that fits on there and if I need to alter this any in order for that to happen. I fed the power cord through here so this will then sit on top of here. Now those bolts are a little bit too long to fit up in there but I noticed that on this side the case is looks like it's an inch deep so I'll just need to cut these stainless studs off uh, just a little bit less than an inch in order to bolt this on there. So actually I can leave them uh, an inch and three-eighths long since this will go on there first. Now in order to to determine where that sits on there they sent a diagram here a template in order to punch it out. Now I have the um, 1.0 Evo drive <clears throat> so that's the blue so I'll need to cut a hole in the center and then these are the two holes that'll take these mounting studs there. But the first thing that I'm going to do is to set this on the, my plate here. And trace that out. So now I'm going to take this and cut it out on my bandsaw. Now that I've got my aluminum cut out and all smoothed up, you can see how this will fit on there like that. So on this side, these holes are actually threaded. So what I need to do is to make a template of where those holes are so that I can drill them into here. And I'm going to do that with a piece of, of tracing paper like this and just simply go over it where those holes are and then go over the whole thing so I have the outline of it as well. This hole is not important, it's just these six holes. All right, so now I've got that. I can now lay this out on my aluminum plate like so and then I'll be able to drill those holes accordingly. That's perfect. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to take this template and to drill these holes in there. Okay, so what I've done here is I found the center line and I punched a hole through here, through this center, and I found the center of where I think that that should lie. So I put just a little bit of a red dot. I don't know if you can see it or not on camera, but it found it that it'd be a little easier to find that spot, which is right there. So now what I need to do is make sure that this center line is lined up 
that. And then set these. That should give me my four holes to drill. So my plate fits on there really nicely. Now one of the issues, and I was afraid that this might happen, are these holes here that this, the side of the uh, pod just comes right up to the edge of that hole. So what I'm going to do is to take some flathead stainless screws and then countersink in there so that that screw will be up in there before I put the case on there so I'll be able to tighten that down. And they're tightened with an Allen um, wrench. So I've been advised to seal underneath here and to seal around here and so that water cannot penetrate through this cable which is probably the weakest point as far as water infiltration goes. So while I'm doing that I'm going to take this other part of the case and put a fresh coat of paint on it. Once I got all of my parts made, I decided to set up all of the components and do a test run. I've got all of the components set up the way that they're going to be put in the boat and I wanted to test it out ahead of time. So I've got it all working now and I'll show you. Here's the throttle. So and then this will be the readout that goes on the dashboard and it tells me that I've got about almost 10 hours of power left. So the way that this works is you pull the throttle forward and push forward. And away, away we go. Uh, I've been advised not to run it full throttle when it's not in the water because there's some little seals in there that can overheat if it's not submerged and cooled with water. So anyway, I know that the whole system works now. So now I can get started in installing it into the boat. Now that I've got that lower end done, I can start working on mounting the control throttle and the uh, information screen. So I'm going to take um, this steering wheel off so that I have a little more room to work in here. Now earlier I took off the original um, throttle and gear shift. So the next thing is to lay out where the throttle 
and the readout screen will go. So you can see here where I cut some of this trim out so that the throttle will sit in there. So I made a little template to put in there. You can see why I cut that out. So that's going to go right there. And then in the screen readout will go right here on the dashboard. So the next thing to do is to drill these holes and to cut this square out.
Well, I originally had thought that the battery would sit here in the case where the old motor was. But I realized that in order to take this in and out of the boat, I would have to take the case all the way off of the motor, off of the battery, each time I wanted to put it inside to charge it. So what I've decided is that there's plenty of room below the aft hatch here in order to put the battery and also all of the other components. And it'll be very easy to reach in and take the battery in and out of the boat. So you can see I've got plenty of space up underneath here in order to put the battery in here. I'll figure a way how to mount that. And then <clears throat> the rest of the components here can go over on this side like so. So I'm going to get busy and start mounting some of those things in there. All that's left now is to go boating. Everything's performing as advertised, so it's a nice little cruising boat. That's never going to get up to any kind of top speeds where you could water ski or something like that, but it's certainly a lot of fun just kind of cruising around in it. So next episode, we'll get back on the Haven. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building. <laughs>